Previously, we explored the fundamentals of server-side rendering in React and discovered its main drawbacks. Let's quickly recap the challenges. First, we can't start rendering HTML until all data is fetched on the server. Second, we need to wait for all JavaScript to load on the client before hydration can begin. And third, every component needs to be hydrated before any of them become interactive. These issues create an all or nothing waterfall effect that is pretty inefficient, especially when some parts of your application are slower than others. To address these performance drawbacks of SSR, React 18 introduced the Suspense SSR architecture. This new architecture allows you to use the Suspense component to unlock two game-changing SSR features, HTML streaming on the server and selective hydration on the client. Let's explore these two features in detail. As we discussed a minute ago, traditionally, SSR has been an all or nothing affair. The server renders the complete HTML, which is then sent to the client. The client displays this HTML, and only after the complete JavaScript bundle is loaded does React proceed to hydrate the entire application to add interactivity. But React 18 gives us a better way. Here is a similar visualization from a user interface perspective. First, you render all HTML. The client eventually receives it. Then you load all the code and hydrate the entire application. But React 18 gives us a better way. When you wrap something like your main content area in a suspense component, you're telling React, hey, don't wait for this part, start streaming the rest of the page. React will show a loading spinner for that wrapped section while it works on the rest of the page. When the server finally has the data ready for that main section, React streams the additional HTML through the ongoing stream, along with a tiny bit of JavaScript that knows exactly where to position that HTML. The cool part? Users can see the main section's content even before React itself finishes loading on their browser. This solves our first problem. You don't have to fetch everything before you can show anything. If a particular section is slow and could potentially delay the initial HTML, no problem. It can be seamlessly integrated into the stream later when it is ready. This is the essence of how Suspense facilitates server-side HTML streaming. But we still have another hurdle to jump. Even with faster HTML delivery, we can't start hydrating until we have loaded all the JavaScript for the main section. If that is a big chunk of code, we are still keeping users waiting from being able to interact with the page. To mitigate this, code splitting can be used. It lets you tell your bundler, these parts of the code aren't urgent. Split them into separate scripts. Using React Lazy for code splitting is particularly powerful here. It separates your main section's code from the core JavaScript bundle. This means the browser can download React and most of your application's code independently without getting stuck waiting for that main section's code. And here's where things get really interesting. By wrapping your main section in a suspense component, you're not just enabling streaming, but also telling React it's OK to hydrate other parts of the page before everything is ready. This is what we call selective hydration, and it is a game changer. It allows for the hydration of parts of the page as they become available, even before the rest of the HTML and the JavaScript code are fully downloaded. From a user's perspective, here's what happens. First, they see non-interactive content streaming in as HTML. Even though the main section's JavaScript code hasn't been downloaded yet, React starts selectively hydrating, and other parts of the page can become interactive. The main section catches up and becomes interactive once its code loads. This is huge because it means a heavy chunk of JavaScript won't hold up the rest of your page from becoming interactive. But it gets even better. Selective hydration also solves our third problem, the necessity to hydrate everything to interact with anything. React starts hydrating as soon as it can, which means users can interact with things like the header and side navigation without waiting for the main content. And the best part, React handles all this automatically. Also, here is something really clever about how React handles hydration. In scenarios where multiple components are awaiting hydration, it prioritizes hydration based on which components users are trying to interact with. Let's say React is about to hydrate the side nav, but the user clicks on the main content area. React will immediately switch gears and hydrate the clicked component during the click events capture phase. This means the component is ready to respond right away. The side nav, it will get hydrated later. So there you have it. React's new suspense SSR architecture 
has effectively tackled all three major drawbacks of traditional SSR. But we are not quite done yet. Despite these improvements in SSR, there are still some challenges we need to think about. First, even though we are streaming JavaScript code to the browser bit by bit, eventually users still end up downloading the entire code for a web page. As we keep adding features to our apps, this code keeps growing. And this leads to an important question. Do users really need to download so much data? Then there is another issue. Right now, every React component gets hydrated on the client side, whether it needs interactivity or not. This means we are using up resources and slowing down load times and time to interactivity by hydrating components that might just be static content. This leads to another question. Should all components be hydrated, even those that don't need interactivity? And here's the third challenge. Even though servers are way better at handling heavy processing, we are still making users' devices do bulk of the JavaScript work. This can really slow things down, especially on less powerful devices. And this leads to another important question. Shouldn't we be leveraging our servers more? These challenges point to something bigger. We need smarter ways to build fast applications that go beyond traditional rendering approaches. What is the solution? That is exactly what we will explore next. Supporting the channel is free. Please like and subscribe. It helps a lot.